Thank you, ladies and gentlemen, for joining me for another edition of Digital Soul Presents. I'm very honored to present this young lady here, a very talented vocalist, songwriter, and producer who has sang with two successful groups, New Birth and Rolls Royce. Also a very a very successful solo artist as well, Miss Elaine Stepters in the house. Elaine, how are you doing today? Hey, John, I'm doing well. How are you? Doing well. Thank you so much for taking time to do this discussion with me today. First yeah, of all, how are you doing? Me. We, we had to get you on the show very quickly because you were about to travel across the seas to Shanghai. Yeah. Shanghai, and, China. And going there for a long minute. You got a residency there for the next six months, correct? Yes, I'll be at the Waldorf Astoria, Shanghai in the Bund. Wow. Talk a little bit about going overseas because this is not your first trip out there. You've done many trips there. Yeah, my first trip to Asia was uh, Taiwan. A few years back, I was at a club called the Brown Sugar, um, and they booked a black female vocalist from America. So I went out there, and that trip was amazing to me. Uh, that was my very first time leaving the country, and I went by myself. All my friends were like, "Oh, you want to take that plane? You want to travel out there by yourself?" I said, "Look, I'll send you a postcard. <laughs> send me address. I'm out." So anyway, um, that started my international career, and then from there, I was invited back to the House of Blues and Jazz which I've uh, been invited there every year, uh, uh, normally like in the winter time, And I do anywhere from 90 to 120 days, or maybe wow. six months. Yeah. So, um, you know, I've been doing that for a while. So I really enjoy international travel. The experience over there is so different yeah. from America. Just the reception of the music and, you know, being American, how much they love us and what we do. And uh, I would say that, the Chinese were the warmest audience that I ever performed for. The warmest, yeah. And they love soul music, yeah. They love it. They savor it. They love uh, all American music, jazz, mm -hmm. you know. Um, and when I'm in blues and jazz, it's all about the classic soul. Aretha Franklin, Gladys Knight, you know, Betty Wright, Shaka, you know. So, oh, um, yeah, they, they love it. And I grew up on all that stuff, so my repertoire is pretty pretty vast. And you know, when you work international, you have to have repertoire. Right. You have to know a different variety of genres of music. So right. yeah, I've been I've been fortunate. Were you yeah. nervous your first trip there, your first actual concert there? And of course I was nervous. <laughs> <laughs> I just really um I was excited, you know, but I didn't know what to expect because the first time I went, I didn't take my own rhythm section. I used the house band. Mm. So, you know, as a vocalist, I mean, you know, songs with the keys and the rhythm pattern, the bass line, you know, concerns just to make sure that I can have what I need behind me. But um, the guys that I had, I had to kind of beat them into shape. But once we got it going, it turned out really wonderful. I was, in, was invited back every year. Yeah. And it's been nine years, you said, previously? Yes. I've been going there wow. since uh, 2010 overseas. Yeah. That's amazing. Wow. Yes. And you're uh, born and raised in Los Angeles, my hometown. Yes, I'm a Cali girl. Went yes. to uh, 74th, uh, went to Horseman Junior High. Very you cool. know, I studied under, my music teacher was Bernie Dunlap, and then I went on to Crenshaw High School. And I had the same music teacher at Crenshaw, too, so that was really, really cool. <laughs> Small world. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Very Shout awesome. out. Yeah. Growing up in L.A., I know literally Lane listened to a lot of music. Uh, you mentioned some greats earlier. Uh, some of your influences as a little girl, what were some of the songs or some of the artists that caught your attention growing up? Well, you know, my dad had a friend that had a record shop, so I would spend all of my allowance money on records, you know, <laughs> save a dollar or two for candy or whatever. But uh, Natalie Cole, um, uh, Betty Wright, um, and the late Gene Knight, you know, and all of Motown. Yeah. But uh, my dad was listening to the radio one day and I heard, uh, you're no good heartbreaker. And I'm telling you, at that moment, everything in me as a vocalist was birthed <laughs> at that moment that I heard Aretha Franklin's voice. So my dad came home. I said, Dad, you got to take me to get this record. I started singing it for him. He looked at me like, what? 
So he took me uh, to the record store and I bought that along with the top 10, of course, that was on the list. You know, we would go to the record store and they had the top 10 list. Yeah. Yeah. And um, it all started from there. But um, another one of my mentors, uh, which is actually the first record I brought, the first 45 I bought was James Brown, Mother wow. Pop. Wow. Yes, I'm a, I was a diehard James Brown fan. I brought every record he ever made. <laughs> Me and my girlfriends used to get together at this little burger stand on the way to school. We called the Candy Gas Station. Okay. We would play James Brown records for about 30 minutes before we would walk to school. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, James Brown was one of my favorites, and uh, you know all the Motown, Diana Ross, and the Supremes, yeah. and the Marvelettes, and all of those. I was I was in it for real. Yeah, that's awesome. That's awesome. And you also um, went to the Eubanks Conservatory of Music as well. Yes, I did. You know, I was um, as a budding vocalist. You know, you listening to yourself, and you listen to criticism, and um, I had a little issue with. Uh, pronunciation and pronouncing the words, you know what I mean? When you were the same words to start with B and S, mm -hmm. you know, without spitting on the microphone and stuff. And I was really concerned about that. So I enrolled in Eubanks Conservatory of Music and took theory and harmony, voice, theory, and harmony. And there I learned how to <clears throat> place myself on the mic and, you know, get the technical things that I needed. Cause I really, it discouraged me when people were saying things about my voice. Cause you know, as a young artist, budding artist, you know, you're very uh, sensitive when people are yeah. critical. You have to grow into knowing um, that it's really for the good when somebody can tell you something, but you have to be able to take it in, take the good out of it. So yeah. um, it really helped me to uh, become a better vocalist in terms of uh, enunciating the words. And my main concern was making sure that you could understand what I was saying, if you know what I mean. Because, you know, you hear some singers, you got to play it back 10 times. Yeah. What is he saying? <laughs> so um, that, yeah, so that was, and Dr. Eubanks was amazing. Um, oh. She was a caring um, person and, and she really loved it. She always told me about the tone of my voice. She loved it. She knew the things that I wanted to work on and she set me up with the right instructors and it, uh, it helped me a lot in my journey. Yeah. Yeah. Eubanks Conservatory of Music alumni. Yeah. <laughs> At what age did you discover that you had a voice? Oh, that's a good one. Because as a child, every year I got a leather coat, a pair of skates, and a tape recorder, mm -hmm. and a re or a record player. But I would say about six or seven years old, okay. I knew that I wanted to sing. And I would sing or whatever, but I didn't like the way I sounded on the tape record. I didn't like it. I was like, what? But, you know, as I started to grow and really getting my tone quality together and, you know, it, it started to sound a little better for me. And then one Sunday, my um, instructor, my music director at church said, Elaine, I have a song for you. And I was like, what? And uh, when I saw that uh, song that he selected for me, my confidence level just to be out front just really skyrocketed. Yeah. And um, yeah, I was on my way then. I, I wasn't scared to be up front, but you know, whenever you're in front of an audience, you always get a little nervous, even now, you yeah. know, for about five or six seconds. Yeah. But, um, yeah, that's where, that's where it all began. Yeah, that's awesome. And you also sang in church too as a little uh, girl too. Yeah, I was in uh, the True Vine Youth Choir and I learned so much. We had a lot of original material that our director would write for us. And, you know, we were able to get really get into harmony and quality and stuff like that. So I did that, you know, that was every Sunday, Bible school during the week, you know what I mean? And choir rehearsal every Thursday. And uh, it was great. I was a part of my schooling also, singing in church. Yeah. Yeah. What, what were some of the favorite songs you like to sing at that time? In church? Yeah. Or just period. Or just period. I, I have a, my repertoire of songs was just, I had my favorites. There was one song called Old Jesus that I loved that I would leave with the choir. If I had the wings of a dove. Okay. And um, what else? Oh, God is Love was another one that we used to do. Okay. And then I, I like to listen to the traditional songs, you know, Mahalia Jackson and uh, Shirley Caesar. Mm -hmm. I listened to that as well. And we sung some of those songs as well. Yeah. Very cool, very cool. And and you have uh, 
spent some time with a very successful group as well, Rolls Royce. Uh, talk about your venture into uh, getting to with that group. Yeah, that was um, a really special moment. I was working at Black Radio Exclusive as a music librarian. Sydney gave me the job. So he knew that I was an aspiring artist. He knew that, but he wanted me to learn, get into the music, learn the music, and uh, kind of get, get in on the other side to see how everything works. So this particular time, uh, when the car wash movie came out, he was telling me, oh, this group is going to be big. You know, Elaine, we're going to review their record and everything like that. So I knew about them, but the lead singer, Gwen Dickey, we had similar tone quality. So I really loved her voice and I studied her. She was just like one of my favorites. So when the opportunity came up for me to audition for Rolls Royce, I was completely blown away. And I was like, I got, I'm like, I got this. You know, this is my girl. I studied, I was there when their career began. Yeah. So uh, I get to the audition and I was so nervous. I couldn't, well, I knew the lyrics, but they just wouldn't come out. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, ooh, 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 ooh. never, ever, ever going to let you. you know, it was like back and forth. They were looking at me. But the tone of my voice is what did it. So they had auditioned six girls that day. Mm. And uh, Henry said, that's it. We don't need to listen to nobody else. And they hired me. Wow. Yeah, and history was made that day for me. And you toured with them how many years? About eight or nine. Long yeah. time. Yeah, it was... Um, we did some shows with some really big artists, you know, Heat Wave and Cool in the Gang and yeah. the Whispers. Oh, when I was on stage, when we did the show with the Whispers at the Greek, I was completely blown away. Yeah. You know, the Greek, I mean, uh, the Whispers is, it don't get no classier than that. Absolutely. And, and, and also from them. L.A. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> from what? And uh, when you're on a ticket with them, everything is first class. Mm -hmm. So that was a, one of the concerts that I remember that was really, really spectacular. But I did a lot of uh, shows with them out of, you know, other states and everything, big festivals. And yeah. it was um, it was really, really, really wonderful for me. Um, but Wishing on a Star was one of my favorites. As a matter of fact, I redid it on my new album, yeah. Getting Back to Basics. Yeah. We kind I, of flipped I, I, it I, a little I, bit. I was going to mention, I, I love the arrangement of your version, uh, how, you, how you did it. Yeah, I love it. Yeah. I'm wishing on a star. To follow where you are oh, I'm wishing on a dream so much my arranger uh, that I worked with who was Robert Turner Jr. during the pandemic he said he did that arrangement especially for me he called me he said Elaine I got this I did, redid a Rolls Royce song for you I slowed it down and this that and the other and uh, he sent it to me and it was I mean I love the song already but we just made it more sultry you know we slowed it down and 
made it more intimate and um the production on it came out really really wonderful and it's all live too it's nothing sequenced yeah it's all live that's why the album is back to basics because it's a totally live album right right yeah Oh, yeah, let, let, let's talk about that album because it's a brand new album and this is your fifth album, correct? Number five. Yeah, no. number, yeah let's yeah. talk let's talk a little bit about that because getting back to basics, you meant you just mentioned this all live, which which is not common anymore. Everybody's using, you know, dolls and laptops and things like that. Talk about right. making this new album. It just was released uh about six months ago. Yeah, August. Oh, oh, 2022. Yeah. yeah, so everybody go get this album, Getting Back to Basics by Elaine Stepner. Yeah. yeah, and my main concept with this album is um, I just want to make a statement to this generation about preserving the bass. You know, uh, um, we have to preserve the bass. We don't want to get away from the foundation because everything is all machines now, and you don't hear the live thing anymore unless you go into a concert to see one of our classic artists, you like Frankie Beverly and Mays, yeah. you know. Like that, but the foundation to me was all organic before we had any sequence machines and drum machines and all that. Right. So that's what the basics are. And I just wanted to, and also with the basics, you know, music had spirituality to it. You know what I mean? You could live through a song. You know what I mean? The songs had more emotion and spirituality to me. And I wanted to bring that back to show them that, you know, we can still write beautiful songs with spirit, spirituality. You know what I mean? We don't have to smoke and do all that stuff every time we get on the record you know what i'm saying it's other things right that you can be just as clever with but the basics is the foundation to me and that's where the organic thing came from and um, it's a little bit more expensive to do it that way but you stand out in the crowd too because it is different some people might say oh you know because it doesn't have that certain snare whatever it might sound uh, a little retro to them Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? But I wanted to make sure that I had the right sounds and everything, but the structure of it being organic, you know what I mean? Pick right. that right drum sound, but it's going to be a real drum instead of a right. machine. Right. Yeah. So uh, that was very, very important to me. And that's the statement that I want to make to this generation. You know what I mean? So somebody has to continue to preserve the bass with live music. Because, you know, you go to a concert now and it's like, it's not even live. Right. I mean, I think it's clever the way they incorporate it. You know, I've been to some concerts and it was all, all the record. And yeah. I'm like, you know, I, I don't think it's fair for me to spend two hundred dollars for a concert ticket to come and listen to the record. Yeah, a lot of a lot of uh, a lot of concert goers they do complain about the artists performing the tracks. You know, in, in, in a lot of cases, uh, and, and you and you made a point. A lot of people say, "Well, I spent this amount of money, and you know, here this group that I've loved all my life, and they come out to this this track playing in the background. And, you know, they want right. to want to hear you know a new arrangement, and they want to see some. You know, they want to see the drummer, they want to see the bass player, they want to see all. Right. This. They want right. to see interaction with the singers and the band. You know, they right. want to see that. So that's that exactly. is missing in a lot of cases. Yeah, so, you know, and I go to a lot of concerts. I did the whole series this year, the whole summer series. I've seen mm. everybody, and uh, <laughs> I'm going to tell you, I'm not going to mention the name, but one one big artist, I really commended him because he didn't actually, I mean, he kind of put the record in there, but I think what they did, when he just did a live track, mm -hmm. kind of superimposed the record in there, and I thought that was clever instead of just playing the record. <laughs> you know what I mean? But some of those parts in there, he was live. Yeah. But, you know, that, that I appreciate it, but... Um, you just don't see it anymore unless you're going to see somebody like Frankie Beverly or the Whispers, yeah. you know, yeah. like that. So hopefully we, they say um, things always come back around. Hopefully we can get back to basics. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Cool. And speaking of live, you also in, in your catalog have a live album. Uh, oh, yeah live at Hollywood Park, which uh, you have to be super proud of that because you're from L.A., and you yeah. got to record your live album in LA. Talk about yeah. putting that project together, which which is a which is amazing. Yeah, that project was really special. Uh, at that time, I was affiliated with Amec Records out of Arizona, and they wanted to do a live album al album on me and uh, do like a Rolls Royce tribute. And I thought it was a great idea because I love the band, all the years I spent with them, and um, my music director. Uh, Richard Turner Jr., he, who also MD'd my last party that I had. Okay. Um, 
But he put the the musicians and everything together, and uh, it was a lot of work. I had four. I think that day I had I had four horns, four rhythm section, like thirteen pieces that day, all live, and it was um it was a lot of work involved. We rehearsed and you know put it together, and uh, we did it live at the Hollywood Park Casino, you know, which is now gone. So that album is like a collector's item because that you know the place is not even there anymore. Yeah. But uh, I was very proud of that record. My band that uh, that I had, it's, it just came together spiritually and musically. It was wonderful. We had a good time. I'm proud of that record. Yeah, absolutely. It's an amazing project. I got a chance to listen to Thank it. You. Yeah, all Thank all the so all the Rolls Royce songs are are super amazing, man. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. They were there too. In in, in, oh, yeah, in attendance. Huh? Yeah. Yeah, they were there. They came. Wow, that was special that. to me also. Gotta love that. Yeah. Your, your career, I mean, your career is amazing because I, I, I discovered that I knew you, but I didn't know you because... <laughs> um, you knew me, but you didn't know me. Huh? Yeah, because I stumbled across a jam back in the day, Sweetness of Your Love, which I forgot about. Right, it's, it's right. It's been so long since I heard that song. When I heard it, I was like, Ah, I remember that song. Yes. <laughs> and, yes, that was you, you, too. and you did a joint on Meteor Man called Good Love, which I, when I heard that, I was like, I still have the CD. <laughs> no, what? Yeah. yeah. When I, realized, like, I was like, okay. I was like, this is her. <laughs> so you yeah, Meteor Man was great. You've been in the game a long time. Talk about uh, your your debut album and that first single, "Sweetness of Your Love," getting that project together, back. Oh wow, that was great. There was a gentleman by the name of Eric Griffin. The God rest his soul, bless his soul. He uh, he met Sidney Miller. I was at Black Radio when I got that record deal. It was okay. so funny because uh, Sidney said, "I have this this young lady that worked for me, and she wanted to sing." Eric was like, "Let me hear the music." And uh, he played it for him. He was like, man, I need to meet this girl. Who is this? I need to meet her. This girl can sing or whatever. So uh, <laughs> we met and he said, he told Sydney, I want to give her a record deal. Sydney was like, really? He said, yeah, I'm going to give her a record deal. So we started putting things together. And um, I had to leave Black Radio to go to Miami to record the album, right? Okay. And Sydney was calling me like, when, when, when are you coming home? I didn't know you did so much stuff around here. You got on. We can't even get the magazine done because you ain't here. <laughs> I said, well, it takes more than a two weeks, Sydney, to do a record, you know. But uh, anyway, he was the one, uh, Sydney was the one that introduced me to Eric and uh, got me into that project. And uh, working with Eric Griffin was great. He was uh, out of um, Miami, Florida. He was uh, working with, working around the Luke Skywalker camp. Okay. okay. Yeah. And um, he was a great musician and uh, producer. And we got together and it was just magic. And um, that was actually my first single that charted in London, The Sweetness of Your Love. Yeah, that was great. I just knew I was going to have, I knew, I just knew it was going to be at number one the next week, even though it didn't happen. Yeah, but, that's a, that's know, a classic <laughs> though. As soon as I heard it again yeah. rec recently, I was like, oh man, I forgot about this joint. I, I saved it. I was like, I got to say it. <laughs> yeah, like, they still I, I, play it over there. Okay. Okay. Yeah, yeah, they still play it on a different lot of our uh, different radio shows, and I haven't had a chance to go into London the way I want to, but I'm I'm going to make it over there. It's on my bucket list now. I'm I'm gonna make it over there. Nice to do some stuff. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Very Thank cool. You. So, what's next on the agenda? I know that you said you're going to Shanghai. Um, be going there for a little bit, and then uh, I know you just put out this let this new album. Uh, touring yeah. on that. Besides, when you come back home, what's going to be next on the agenda for Elaine? Well, hopefully, I won't be coming back home soon. I want to stay on the <laughs> road, of course, right? I want to stay on the road and uh, promote this new album. Uh, and we're looking to, uh, you know, get it charted and, you know, take it to the next level. But I'm always writing. As a matter of fact, I'm already have some new stuff I'm working on. I have a really nice catalog of music. So I'm always writing and doing things, not just for myself, but I look forward to getting my production company in full force. I want to get some artists, sign them and, and produce them and help them not have to be out there 20 years before something happened. Yeah. You know, help, help them make it in their careers. So that's my plan to stay on the road for a little bit. And eventually I will do 
another record. Maybe we'll yeah. see. Is there anybody in particular that you may want to work with, either a producer or another singer or musician? All of them. <laughs> I want to work with all of them. It's a, it's a lot of them. You guys heard it here. She she wants to work, man. So just keep her in mind. <laughs> now, you know what? I wrote a uh I wrote a answer to the song Love Scene by Joe. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So I would uh, like I, to get that, get that to him so we can check it out. I'm real proud of it. It's nice. I don't, oh, said, like, yeah. my, curiosity is, I'm, my curiosity is peaking there. I'm wondering what that song is about. <laughs> mm -hmm. I told you when he's singing, I feel like he's the, I'm the only woman in the world oh, he's singing. Oh, man. <laughs> Which, of course, was a part of my inspiration, but I love Joe. He just, he takes me there. Yeah, yeah. Joe's he's wonderful. Art. He's, a, he's a stylist. His voice is distinctive like no other. You know, and um, he 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 does it for me. Yeah. I mean, there's some other ones out there that I like, but he stands out in the crowd. Yeah, yeah. Joe's always put out a good record. Yeah. Yeah, he's great. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So we come see about me right now is my favorite joint. Like that, that that's my song for right now. That's you just know what today, I forgot though. to mention that. I forgot right. to mention that I did a licensing deal with a label in Spain, and they put that record on a 45 in the collector's uh edition uh, in the collector's group in Spain. It's on a it's wow. put on a 45. Isn't that amazing? Wow. I forgot to mention that before. We'll Rightfully so. Elaine, I want to thank you so much for stopping by. If you don't mind just telling people where they can find you, your website, Instagram, Facebook, any handles that you have, go ahead and knock those off to our, our viewers. For. Okay. Yes, everybody. You can reach me and see me at my website, ElaineStepter.com. On Facebook, on Facebook, I am LaSwan Stepter. On Instagram, I'm Stepter Laswan23. Hit me up, send me a message. Thank you. Download a track or two. I appreciate it. Please do. This sister's voice is amazing. Please check her out. And hopefully, uh, when you come back home, you'll do some dates here in the Los Angeles area. Ho ho hopefully, hopefully, hopefully. <laughs> oh, yeah. I hope to come back home and be at the Greek. You know what I'm saying? Okay. I'll come see me at the Greek. Yeah, I, I will keep my eyes and ears open. So when you come back, I will be in the place. So you have my word. I'll be there. Yeah. Thank you so much, John. Thank you for taking time to have me on your show. I really appreciate it. And, Thank uh, you. Thank you. I'll see you soon. It was amazing. Thank you so much to my viewers, the multi-talented vocalist, songwriter, and producer, Elaine Stepter. Please. Okay. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank Everyone you, John. have a good night. Thank you. Good night. Thank you.